Welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. And we're going to be back to telling you three great stories from Florida. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and thank all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I truly appreciate it. Uh, I think as, as of this morning, we're at 97. It would be so sweet to break 100 with this video. Anyways, um, I want to also thank everyone who's been commenting. I think it's fantastic reading your comments. Uh, and uh, keep it coming, guys. Uh, keep sending in your comments. And more importantly, send us your story if you have any. So why don't we get into the first story of the day? So you know the drill. Get yourself a beverage and sit back and relax. Okay, the first encounter takes place the second week of April of 2005. And this takes place in the Big Cypress National Preserve. I was camping with my family in Big Cypress area near Alligator Alley in April, the week of the 15th. I saw what I thought was a black shadow standing eight feet tall in the woods in front of me. I told my friend and turned my head. A few minutes later, I looked again and that black thing was gone and I was able to see through the forest. I shook the feeling off and then that night is where it began. That night for dinner, we cooked chicken legs and turkey meatballs over the fire. My brother left the garbage bag hanging 10 feet away from us and we went to bed. 4 a.m. I awoke hearing this strange sound in the far distance sounding three miles away. The sound came closer and closer to the point I knew it was heading towards my campsite. I woke up my ex-boyfriend, then my brother, in, an, in another tent. I said, do you guys hear that sound? They said, yes, be quiet. The sound was a wailing sound with a heavy breath at the end. I thought it was an alien and my ex thought it was a monster. The sound was horrible and it got closer and closer to the camp. I heard it go by my tent and then head in the direction of my brother's, to the side of it, then left and went down the trail path behind our tents. I got up and wanted to look out the tent window, but my ex grabbed me and said, Are you crazy? The next morning we woke up and talked about it, and I began to trace the direction where the monster walked. I looked down and found a footprint in the sandy trail. It looked like a huge foot, both wide and long. Both guys put their foot in the print, and it was way bigger than their foot in width and length. It couldn't have been a person's foot. It looked like four big toes. This wasn't there the day before. We went up the trail and saw a few more of the prints. When we went home, a guy friend of my cousin's was interested in the phenomena, so I went back with him and showed him where it occurred and the footprints, but it had slightly been messed up. He took pictures, but it didn't come out good. I wanted to go back again that year, but my ex-brother and cousin said no way. My cousin said she would have to bring a gun if she ever did go back. This strange happening scared them to death. I did go back with my kids, and we were fine. No noises heard that night. A friend told me to listen to the skunk ape noises on the computer. And I couldn't believe it. It sounded a lot like what we heard that night at the campsite. Hope you enjoyed the true story I just told you. I will be visiting it again sometime soon. I would rather not give the direct area since I don't want it to sell out when I need to camp. The location I gave was correct, but it is a long radius. I don't know about you guys, but I think after hearing those screams... I would have probably left the next day. Uh, I don't know if I would have stuck around. But in any case, uh, I have to say that this eyewitness is very curious in finding out more about these creatures or these beings, I should say. Leave me your comments whether you would have stuck around or left the next day.
Okay, this next story takes place in approximately the same general area. Uh, it takes place on November 20th, 1993. Several months after the Hurricane Andrew struck South Florida, five friends and myself were on a hog hunting trip in an area just southeast of the Big Cypress Indian Reservation. My friends had a camp there, along with other people who had been there for years. This area is a weekend getaway spot where people go to hunt and camp. The area is very swampy and filled with many oak and cabbage palm hammocks and cypress heads. To get around the terrain, you must have a four-wheel drive swamp buggy with a good clearance. On this particular day, we had drove many hours in search of hog tracks. We used dog to sniff out the hogs by driving along the swamp buggy trails. I had noticed a certain trail that had not been used for quite some time and had no visible buggy tracks. I came up to a big puddle in the road and noticed that the animals in the area had been using it to drink from. I saw a hog, track, deer, turkey, raccoons, and birds. Noticing the hog tracks, I drove completely around the pool of water to save this as a marker to return later in the evening. Around midnight, we drove two buggies into the area that I suspected hogs would be hiding from the mid midday sun. We drove all night, crashing down palmetto brushes that had grown up in this area on the trails. During this time, no other human signs had been observed until the next day. At the pool of water where I saw the animal signs, I returned and found two strange tracks. It appeared to be human-shaped, bipedal. One was very big and the other very small, like a child's or possibly deformed. The tracks had a stride of approximately six feet with a depth of two to three inches. I tried to imitate the step and stride and could not. I would fall over and barely broke the surface of the mud a half an inch. When I stomped my foot into the mud, I still couldn't reach the depth of the suspicious tracks. I went back to the camp and told my friends what I had found. We then returned to the location later that evening, and to my amazement, new tracks were found. The maker of the tracks had returned after my departure. It may be noted that myself and friends are veteran law enforcement officers who have seen it all, done it all, and got a t-shirt. We don't believe what we hear and half of what we see. At this point, we were very suspicious and concerned about what we had stirred up out of the swamps the night before. We had an 8mm VHS camera and videotaped the tracks and the compression of our tracks. Three out of five of us believed that we had found the tracks of an escaped gorilla. Being that the hur hurricanes had damaged the Miami Zoo and reports of escaped monkeys had been reported, or possibly these are tracks of a skunk ape. Being police officers, you don't run back to town and tell everyone that you saw skunk ape tracks while you were on vacation. We left the area in amazement and discussed the possibilities of it being a skunk ape. While riding back to camp, approximately three miles from the suspicious track location, on a hard dry roadbed, we found another set of tracks. The track impressions were as deep as the ones found near the mud. At this time, we were convinced that no humans had made these tracks because of the lack of other vehicle tracks and the fact that someone walking three miles barefoot in this terrain with one bad foot was unlikely. We videotaped this track spot as well. Upon returning home, a couple of us were convinced that this needed further investigation. I spoke with some of the old timers that had hunted this part of the county and they laughed about my tail. Later in the spring, I returned to the area to try and locate the tracks again so that I could take casts and photos if I found anything. The area was like what I had found prior to driving in the swamps months prior. No tire tracks, just the local inhabitants, hogs, deer and turkey. 
These woods are thick, and I do believe that an intelligent creature could sneak around undetected from civilized man. The land is rich with food and shelter. I have moved away from my home in the glades, and I often wonder if I had scared a skunk ape from its hiding spot in that pristine oak hammock during the fall of 1993, or was it a prankster? We never told anyone out of our circle of friends and never read about mysterious tracks found in the Everglades and or spoke with anyone down there that might have seen the same tracks. I guess it will be my own little life's mystery. Well, that's another great story from five veteran police officers. I was half half expecting to, to hear him say that when he spoke to the the old hunters in the area that they would have seen something or, you know, collaborated the fact that, yeah, they've seen tracks or some signs, but they laughed at him instead. Well, let me know your comments down below. And now on to the last story of the day. All right, this last story takes place on August 21st of 2019, and it takes place in Okaloosa County, Florida. I hope I pronounced that correctly. All right, let's get into this story. My daughter attends the University of West Florida. I had just finished getting her settled in her dorm room, stocked up her groceries and other essentials. I left in the late morning to head back home, which is east of Pensacola, some three plus hours. All through the first hour or so, there were tremendous rain bands like we are used to here in Florida. As I was traveling on Interstate 10, the trailer trucks would put up a literal fog of water spray, so I wasn't going more than 50 miles per hour. As I got out of the last rain band, the sky got brighter and brighter to the point where I could get back to 70 miles per hour. I was still following a car at about 10 cars length. I checked the rear view and no traffic behind me. And I remember looking around the car ahead and nothing for some distance. I was just about ready to pass the white car when he put on his brakes and I closed the distance to him fairly quickly. I braked also not knowing what was ahead of him, maybe a truck tire carcass, and he could swerve into my lane and I pass him. Even though I am driving a pickup truck, I ride a motorcycle and I sort of drive like I ride, very defensively. As I slowed, I noticed some movement off the road. We were both in the right lane. On the other side of the guardrail, something caught my eye. We had just come over either a swampy area or a small creek, so there was a guardrail over that area. Still, there was a gully between the guardrail and the tree line, maybe 20 feet deep. Almost instantly, I thought, bear, but wrong color. Our bear here are jet black, and if they stand, you have the rare chance to see that they aren't very tall. My next thought was a man in a ghillie suit but wrong again. This was not material. It was hair, matted down, wet hair, and the height, maybe eight feet. It was huge. So as I saw it, my car had almost come to a complete stop. The car ahead of me was directly beside the creature and had stopped or was moving very slowly. What I saw was a living creature, everything articulated perfectly, head, arms, and legs. I had a profile to the back view of it, saw its muscles in the upper back. The color wasn't exactly uniform, but varied between shades of chocolate brown. The head looked rounded. I couldn't see the ears or a neck, but it definitely had a head and looked down before stepping into the gully. At that time, I saw arms that moved, but really saw the separate legs and saw what was matted here stuck together from the legs. It stepped down, rounded the gully, and out the other side to go into the tree line. Its motion was very smooth, almost like it was gliding. So even if a man could don a suit and act like an eight-foot t- eight tall living creature, 
How did he manage to walk down a steep embankment that was grassy and wet? Any human would be on his ass or tumbling dangerously down the embankment. Anyway, I hurriedly called my wife, who laughed at me for a minute or two, but then realized I was serious. She said, get the license plate of the car, which I didn't, and where you are. I was surprised that I hadn't done all of that. Frankly, I think I was dazed. Well, I know there is someone else that saw this thing, but that is about all. I would estimate this thing weighed about four to five hundred pounds. It wasn't fat or barrel chested. It wasn't skinny either, like it didn't have enough to eat. It was healthy and athletic in appearance, and it sure covered a difficult area in no time. By the way, this interstate highway cuts through the Elgin U.S. Air Force Base. All right, there you have it, guys. That was three fantastic stories from the state of Florida. Now, if this had awoken anything inside, made you remember anything, and you want to share, then don't forget, guys, you can share your encounter stories right here on this channel. So please forward your stories to OntarioCryptids at gmail.com. And your stories, again, can be as anonymous as you would like. So guys, thank you so much. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. And in, in the midst of this COVID-19, be safe. See you guys next week.